14 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and there's a snowstorm going on. In these conditions, most people would want to be inside, and I did too. But instead of being inside of my dorm room, like many of my friends, I was inside of a homemade sleeping bag a few friends and I had sewn together a few days earlier. Now you're probably asking, why is he in a sleeping bag? To answer this question, we have to go back 10 years. I spent most of my childhood in the Boy Scouts program. Every month we'd go backpacking, and on these trips, we would sleep on the ground underneath the stars without a tent. If it started to rain, we would pitch a plastic tarp above us. On these nights, our sleeping bag was the only thing keeping us warm. And we lived by a scout slogan, do a good turn daily. The way my old scout master described this was that anybody could do a good thing every single day. As I grew older, I became more and more aware of the different challenges people around the world were facing. I remember seeing pictures of refugee children struggling to stay warm in the winter. I remember seeing my friends share pictures like this on Facebook and offer their own thoughts and prayers. What I remember most, though, was how helpless I felt. Seeing this picture and knowing that the only thing I could do was offer my own thoughts and prayers. I eventually left the program and started taking classes at MIT. There, I was surprised. A lot of my classmates were focusing their time on creating the new app or researching emerging technologies such as virtual reality. But they weren't spending as much time on what I saw to be other pressing issues such as the Syrian refugee crisis. So there I decided to combine what I had learned in Boy Scouts with what I was learning at MIT to create Traveler Pack, a multi-purpose sleeping bag specifically designed for refugees in the Middle East to help them stay warm during the winter and also improve their quality of life. And with this project, I adopted a very stubborn mentality. I was going to do whatever it took to make a difference. In the beginning, we wanted to work with raw wool, but you can't buy that online in small quantities so we found a list of farmers in Massachusetts on Google and started cold calling and cold emailing. Eventually, I spoke with a f over the phone uh, with a shepherd, and I decided it was worth a shot. So I rented a car, drove three hours down to his farm to meet the shepherd, but more importantly, to meet his sheep. And he ended up selling me some wool. Our next step was to sew together our first prototype. So we convinced the mechanical engineering professor to lend us a $600 sewing machine. And with this, we stored everything in my dorm room. We used to put the sewing machine in my closet underneath my clothes, and we threw all the materials underneath my bed. Every few nights, we would move everything to the kitchen where we would sew together pieces of this bag on our dining room table until eventually we had our first prototype. For the longest time though, we didn't know how exactly to test this bag to see if it worked. Until one night in January 2017, a snowstorm had come into Boston and the mayor had shut down the city. I was walking, walking back to my dorm in the middle of the storm when I thought to myself, wow, it's pretty cold outside. The temperature had dropped down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit then. And then this ridiculous idea popped up. Maybe the best way to test this bag is for me to sleep inside of it overnight and outside during this snowstorm. My first thought was, if I decide to do this, you know, there's a pretty big chance I might get really hurt. But I knew that with this project, we wouldn't be able to move forward unless we knew whether or not this bag worked. Granted, I was also a college freshman, so I decided it was worth it. That takes us back to this original picture. So I waited for a break in the storm, I threw my bag down, and I got inside of it. The next morning I woke up, there was snow all over the bag, but I was completely fine. And it was at this moment that I realized, you know, maybe we do have a good chance at helping some people. Since then, a lot of things have changed. 
we now work with a manufacturer to produce our bags on a much larger scale so that we no longer have to sew them in my kitchen. We also work with a nonprofit called New Day Syria, and they have a team on the ground in Syria that has done some amazing work with the local refugee populations there, gathering design input, distributing our bags, and most importantly, helping the local refugee populations integrate Traveler Pack into their day to day lives. This past winter, we raised about $50,000, and with that money, we've distributed 600 of our bags in Syria, and we have another 400 in production. In the meantime, we are continuing to look for ways to make an even bigger impact. If I may, I want to leave you with a little bit of food for thought today. With Traveler Pack in the beginning, we were three freshmen, and we would call the Red Cross and the UN out of the blue and ask them all these questions like nobody's business. I used to email nonprofits telling them, hey, my name's Vic, I am a product manager at a company called Traveler Pack, do you have a few minutes? Trying to convince them that I wasn't really just an 18-year-old trying to balance studying for exams and this. At one point, I even took up a job on the side sorting mail for MIT students so that my team and I could purchase more materials and make more prototypes. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you see something wrong in the world, there's always something you can do. It's never easy, and it doesn't happen overnight, but I truly believe we can become the change we've so desperately been waiting for, and that starts with each and every one of us. Thank you.